welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He is good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon El Che, the living God, who loves you with a true agape love. He wants to pour it in your heart, write it on your mind, and keep your heart and mind in perfect peace because your mind has stayed on Him. You continually come before the Lord and just talk to Him. He's your friend, your best friend. He's the friend that sticks closer to you than any brother, sister, mother, dog, cat, <laughs> because he's in you. He's with you. He's to you. He's through you. He's the one who fortifies us, strengthens us with strength in the inner man so that we have the ability. We have the ability. We have the might, the wherewithal, the consciousness to do whatever needs to be done today. He's the strength of our lives. Even going to bed at night and laying your head on the pillow, the Lord is there. He's with you. He's in us. See, his love is carrying you. His love never ceases. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It is there with you. Just, it, is, it says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The mercies of the Lord they never stop. Not for you and me. He's carrying us in the wings, on his wings of love. He's taking us higher and higher. I know those are, those are lines and songs that I've heard. You know, those are, are all lines that I've heard in songs especially those songs that have something to do with human flesh. But the love of God is greater than every, any, and every love, any, let's come on, say it right. The love of the Lord is greater than any love that I've ever known. There's nobody who, who goes to the lengths that God has gone to, to bring us into himself. He gave up his son for us. He, he watched him take on the sin of the world, be kicked and, and punched and slapped and spit on, disrespected in every way, argued with. And then they nailed him to a cross, to a tree, and they killed him. But God, I, I know, we, it doesn't end there, does it? It goes beyond the cross. It was a plan from the very beginning of time. But I'm just talking about the disrespect that the Creator took. I'm, I'm talking about the disrespect that the Creator took when Jesus was born into this world that, that the world didn't even recognize Him. He took all of this pain and hurt. The world that he created rejected him. Yet the Father is sending his love to us through his Son. His Son is love. His Son is the Son of God. His Son now help me while I'm trying to say this the right way so that we can get into the, 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 the mercy seat, into the seat of love where we can rest our heart, rest our mind, will, and emotions, where we can stay put and have the strength that we need every moment, every second of the day. Jesus didn't just, he, he didn't just die on a cross. It was a plan from the very beginning that a body would be given to him. The word of God. A body was given to the word. The word has always existed. The word becomes flesh in, 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 in this world. And this word is the word that began the world. When the word was said, Light came into this universe, into this planet. Trees and birds and grass and, and, uh, and water and, 
sky developed. Everything came into place because of this word. This word speaks into our lives and says that there is nothing too hard for God. There's nothing impossible for him. This was the plan from the very beginning to save humanity. Isn't it enough to be scooped from the dust to the ground? Isn't, isn't, isn't it enough to know that God said, let us make a man in our image? Then he scoops it down into the dust of the ground and shapes and forms his physical body, blows a breath into his nostrils, and we become a living soul. We become a living soul. I thank God for Jesus. I, I thank God for, for Jesus. He brings us into a place where he is living in us, and we're not just a living soul anymore. But we have Christ in our hearts. And Christ is love. He is God's love to us. This is where we walk out our soul. <laughs> we, we walk out our soul salvation. Think about this. With fear and, and trembling and in the love of God. In the awe of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When we understand the one who is love, we're in awe with him. We're like the angels who stood there saying, Holy, holy, holy. In the book of Isaiah, they're saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We're standing there with our mouth open like Isaiah was when he saw, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Our heart is filled with his glory. We're overwhelmed and, and we're filled with the knowledge of him, who he is. When we really get this, we're filled with, when we really get the awe of God, we're filled with the knowledge of his will. We're filled with the knowledge of him, which gives us the knowledge of his will. When we're filled with the knowledge of our, His will, we can go about this life here in love and in grace and mercy and kindness. We can do what we have to do without being angry to the point where you disrespect, you hurt, kill, and steal. And you do what, you, what the flesh does on its own in its mercilessness. The love of God is not mushy, ooey, and gooey. <laughs> it's not a fleeting feeling or a feeling that we have for a year, six months, three months, and then we, you know, the person does something wrong and we don't care about them anymore. It's not that kind of love. This love, this agape love, understands the flesh. It, un it knows the devil. The devil was created by God. Everything in this life seen yet not seen heard yet not heard was created by God and for God and it was the it, it was the enemy's decision and God already knew what his decision was going to be but that decision was his to make Judas made his decision and he cried about it later listen I don't want to live in bitterness of soul, in any type of anguish or anger, sadness and depression. I don't want what the flesh has to offer. I want to be carried in the love of God. I want to sit down in His love and be carried by Him. That means coming to Him, sitting down, giving Him your heart and letting Him have it. <laughs> The Lord is our shepherd. I wrote it down over here. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm secure in Christ. He's going, to, he's going to take everything and work it together for my good. If we believe that God is, and that no matter then, then no matter what our situations and circumstances are, the Lord is working on them. What do we do? We come and we pour out our heart before him, not boo-hoo-hoo, I'm in trouble again, not boo-hoo-hoo, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts. 
He sees the hurt. We need to come into his, his house, into the, onto the throne room of grace, where we have mercy and help in our time of need. And you know what happens? Your words become worship. Your, your words become a song. Your, your, your words, the words of your heart, become an, an awe. <laughs> you start loving your Creator. You start looking at the scriptures and you begin to say, you see things like, what was it, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. I mean, you really start taking the scripture and applying it where it goes and the scripture starts to give you strength. 1 Peter chapter 5 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober and be vigilant. The devil is, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You, we, us, resist steadfast in the faith. That's the word of God. Believing who God is and who you are in Christ is pulling out your sword and speaking the language, remembering God's language towards you. Nothing shall by any means harm you. I've given you power over all the works of the enemy. Luke chapter 10. He's given us power over all the works of the enemy and says that nothing shall by any means harm us. We need to take this word and keep it in our remembrance. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Aware, awake, be aware. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom you resist, resist steadfast and in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are going on with all of us. All who have called on the name of the Lord are being attacked. But we stand, therefore, with our loins girt about in the truth, the word of God. The Holy Spirit is in us to remind us of all truth, the word of God. He's also called the spirit of truth. I, I love it that he has sent his spirit into our hearts. That place where you care about everything. That place where everything hurts all around you and the confusion comes to into your eyes, into the eyes of your mind. And, and you, you don't know how to do this and you don't know how to do that. And, and everything's falling apart. You're angry all the time, bitter all the time, resentment all the time, depressed all the time, stressed out all the time. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, if we would just give more audience to the Lord, if we would, what is it in, in, in Proverbs chapter 3? <laughs> we walk by faith and not by sight. No, that's not it. <laughs> Where did I come? Where did that one come from? But Proverbs chapter 3. If it won't come to you and if something else pops up, run to the other one. Run the other way. Run to the scripture. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. i finish this one. Verse 8. For it will be health to your belly, to your navel, and marrow to your bones. It's going to strengthen you. It's strengthen the inner man. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you. It's strengthen the inner, inner man so you have the ability to do what needs to be done to weather whatever storm comes your way. Yeah, it could be a physical storm, but I'm really talking about a spiritual storm, a soul storm. This, this, these words 
these words are, are coming into your mailbox. These words are coming over the phone. These words are on whatever social app you have. The, these words are coming on your job. These words, because all, 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 it, all it, it is, all the weapons of the enemy are words. He can use natural means against us. He can use physical bodies against us. But it all begins in words. And that's why the word of God needs to be in our heart and in our mouth. And the Lord has sent his word in our heart and in our mouth. He has put his word, written his word, in our heart and in our minds. The salvation of God is in our heart and in our mouth. The salvation of God is in our... Listen, the salvation of God is, is God. It's who He is. That's what the name says, Jesus. God is salvation. Salvation comes from His throne. We are saved and we are free from condemnation, free from guilt, free from fear, free from the power of sin in the flesh. We don't have to live in it anymore, and we don't have to put up with it anymore. We can live a holy life, a life filled with the love of God, filled with the joy of the Lord, filled with the strength of the Almighty. Because the same power that raised Christ from the dead is living in us, making us alive. You know, people, we, we're born into this world, and we think we're alive until we, until we say yes to Jesus. Then we see things the way that they really are. We're seeing from a spiritual, a heavenly perspective. We can see where we're sitting right now. We can see where we're standing. We can see where we're walking. But we're seeing with new eyes. The eyes of the Spirit. The eyes of the Spirit don't give in to what people look like or what things sound like. Uh, I'll read Isaiah chapter 11 and what the Spirit of God does in you makes you aware of, causes you to act in and act out in. We're going to act out in the love of God. We're going to walk in the nature of God. We're going to take all of our cares and put it right into His hands and be carried on His wings, the wings of His love. His love carries me. Every day, no matter what I have to do that I don't like and I don't want to do, and I've got a lot of that, the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Things are going to change. The Lord has given us a promise. And we have to take hold of that promise. Did I finish this, uh, First Peter? And five, First Peter chapter 5, verse... No, First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. But God, but the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while. It means, suffering means, real suffering isn't that we gave into that feeling and that depression. Suffering is saying the truth, saying what God is saying and has said and believing, standing on the word. No matter what you're going, going through, no matter what has been said against you, you believe what God said about you. You're taking his promise and you're putting that right there where the situation is, in that hurt, in that trouble, in that chaos, in that confusion. The Lord didn't give me a spirit of confusion. He gave me his spirit. Hmm? He gave me his spirit of wisdom and of might, of clarity, a sound mind, a clear mind. I have the mind of Christ. It says in Proverbs 10 and 7, the memory of the righteous is blessed. We declare his word. That's suffering, declaring his word against what you're feeling like today or what somebody else has said. We don't believe the picture that they paint. We believe the picture that God gave us. Whatever promise he gave to you, hold on. Be like Mary. Mary conceived that word. And the word became flesh. 
by the Holy Spirit. And Luke chapter 1 and 45. Blessed is she that believes, for there will be a performance of what God has told her. We take hold of what God has told us. And we believe it will manifest, just like he said, no word of the Lord returns void. It accomplishes what he sends it to do. So if his word is in your heart, begin to declare it. And we're going to see the security of God show up in our lives. Well, if we suffer with him, and by saying what the Lord has said, after you've suffered a while, he will make you mature, perfect. He will establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. I so look forward to, stand up to this. Because it's him who, who picked us up out of the dust of the ground. It's him who blew his breath into our nostrils. It's him who sent his son to save us. And it's him who sent his spirit into our hearts. It's the Lord's love who carries me. It's the Lord's love who carries us. First John chapter 5 in verse 13. And I end here. Let the love of God carry you today. Let the strength of the Almighty be yours today. If there's nothing too hard for the Lord, let the peace that Jesus has given us today be your peace. Be your resting place. Let him be that resting place. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Proverbs, again, chapter 3, 5 and 6. 1 John, chapter 5. These things have I written unto you that, that believe on the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Always remember this. That we are beyond the cross. That we have life in God forever. And that what, we, what we're looking at right now is going to change. This is not going to remain the same. And that, what, and, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him. The confidence that we have in Christ is that he is the Son of God. We believe that our Savior has saved us. That Jesus is the Son of the living God who died and rose again. Now, I have to veer off for just a minute because just like Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this rock, upon this knowledge of me, I will build my church. That's you and us. That's you and me. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus comes and he gives us the keys to the kingdom. The key is who he is. You've been accepted in the beloved. You're his. We are his. And he's working everything out together for the good of those who are in love with him. All we have to do is abide in him. All we have to do is keep this word and believe this word that he said. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, we have this answered prayer that we've desired of him. Believe the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. I've got a lot of reasons to lean on my own understanding every time I look around me. But I believe God for what he said to me. <laughs> I believe God for what he said to me, and I can't wait to say, look and see what the Lord has done for me. That is a, that is a, a joy for me. He gave me a vision a long time ago, and I'm holding on to that vision still today. Blessed is she that believes, for there will be a performance of what the Lord has told her. And I can't wait for the day when I can, when I can come back here and say to you, look and see what the Lord has done for me. Now, whatever the Lord has said to you, Keep it. 
Don't let the enemy snatch it from you and you forget about it. But declare what the Lord has for you today. And walk today in love. Walk today in peace. He is our peace. He is our love. That's why this I'm constantly saying, don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. Because as we take up our cross today and walk, the knowledge and the wisdom of God is coming to your remembrance and it's directing your steps as we go about the day and the night. He is with us. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face International. Get the Word in Your Face. Be carried on the wings of His love. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to drop you. Whatever hurts, come into the throne room of grace and get the strength you need. Get the wisdom you need. Get the Get the strength. Because he wants, he wants to take you higher and higher. Be blessed, people of God. I love you. Bye-bye.